Happy, Happy Sunday, Sunday, everyone. everyone. What a joy it is to be alive. What an even greater joy it is to be saved. I want to welcome you this morning to our morning of worship here at the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church of Hamilton, Georgia. Here, where we seek to glorify God through the love of Jesus Christ, anchored in the power of the Holy Spirit. Also here at Friendship Baptist Church, we know that in the presence of the Lord, there is liberty. So feel free to dance and sing, free to lift your hands and worship because the Son has set us free indeed. So listen, here's your opportunity to participate in our worship right where you are. So please join our services already in progress. Yeah. 
Or are you committed to Christ 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days in a year? We ought to be committed to him every time our eyes pop open. Are y'all in here with me? We ought to be committed to him regardless of our situations and our circumstances because here's what you got to understand is that if you're going to accept the challenge to be committed to him, you got to know life is not going to always give you some lemonade. Right, right. There's going to be times in life where you're going to struggle. There will be times in life where you're going to go through some things that people don't understand. But watch this. If I'm committed to Jesus Christ, then guess what's going to happen? Whatever I'm going through, how many of y'all know he will be there with me? Is that what David said? David says like this, Yea, go I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why, David? Because God is. How many of y'all know he's with you? He says, what's this? He says, he says we're going to accept the challenge. Here it is. He says, change our disposition. That's my, my number one. He says, change my disposition. Okay? Change my disposition. Change the way I think about God. Change the way I act towards God. Change the way how I feel about God. Can I tell you sometimes you're not going to get in your way all the time? All right. But what I have to do is change my disposition to know that if I'm going to faithfully follow God, then whatever God gives me, I got to be willing to accept it. Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. I have to be willing to accept it because watch this. It's not about me. It's all about who? God. I told you you got to have your time, your talent, your treasure. What am I doing to make the body of Christ better? That's why he said in verse 1. Go to verse 1. Look what he said in verse 1 of Ephesians. He said, watch this. He says, I beseech you that ye what? Walk what? Worthy of the what? Vocation wherewith ye are what? Called. God has called us into this world. He's called us into this body of Christ. Let me tell you, you're not here by accident. You're here to make a difference. The question is, are you making a difference? When people see you outside, of these four walls, can they still identify the Christ in you? That's what we are today. Asking the question, can Christ still be seen in us? Here it is. He says, change the disposition in verse 1, walk worthy. But watch this in verse 13. He says, watch this, change your determination. He says, I got to keep doing ministry until when? Come on, in verse 13, y'all help me. I have to keep doing ministry until when? Until we all come into the unity of the faith. Well, maybe, maybe that doesn't make sense to somebody. Well, let me tell you what the faith is. The faith is my belief in Jesus Christ. The work is what I do because of my faith. The work I do in ministry is because of my structured belief in him. You do know, here it is again. He was born, he lived, he died, he was buried, he got up, he went away, and this is where we stopped. Guess what? He's coming back. All right. All right. The reason I want you to be the best you that you can be is because Jesus is coming back. All right. And when he comes back, ladies and gentlemen, here's what he's going to ask. He's going to not ask you what you've done. He's going to ask you, do you believe in me? Right. And that's, that's that not just so much him asking you. He's going to already know whether or not you believe in him, not based upon what you did, but how you served. Right. And so we say, we say, got to do what? Acknowledge or accept the challenge. Let me move on to number two. Here's where we want to go. Drop down to verse 17. He says, not only accept the challenge, but number two, he says, we have to acknowledge our needs. Let me write that down. Number two, acknowledge our needs. What does he say right there? Acknowledge your need. How many of y'all need God? Amen. Amen. But guess what? A lot of us need him but we're afraid to ask him. Because we don't want no one to see our tears. 
Am I making sense? We don't want no one to get in our business. But here's what God says. If you're going to follow me faithfully, don't worry about nobody else getting in your business. He says, make sure I'm in your business. <laughs> because when you need me, I can be there. When you need them, they may be nowhere. So look what he says. He says, I got to announce my need. Watch this in verse 17. Look what he says in verse 17. He says, watch this. He says, this I say therefore, and testify how. How we testify how? In the Lord that ye what? Henceforth walk what? Not as other Gentiles. Now, drop the kicks down right there. Verse 17 says, God says, if you're going to be better than you are today, tomorrow, he says, you can't walk like other folks are walking today. He said, if you're going to be who I need you to be tomorrow, he says, watch this, you got to acknowledge your needs because guess what? Everybody in church ain't in Jesus. Let me say it again. Everybody that is in church is not in Jesus. It has to be a sudden because what's, look what he said. He uses the word other, O-T-H-E-R. Look what he says. He says other. He categorizes the Gentiles. Look what he says in verse number 17. He says, walk not as what? Other what? Look what he said. There must be a category there because now he says how? In the what? Vanity of their minds. See, what God says to you and I, he says, we're not going to walk just any kind of way. Friendship, I'm trying to suggest to you before we can sing, before we can preach, before we can hum and move, before we can pray and do all of this other thing, something about us got to change. I wish I had some help in here. Something about us got to change. Now watch this. The our ex ex uh, appearance can't change. The same way I laid down last night, if the Lord let me wake up in the morning, preferably I still look the same. I may grow old in age, but preferably I still look the same. But guess what? My looks is not what God is concerned about. Mm -mm, mm -mm. What God is concerned about is what is on the inside of you. Is that right? That's why he says, now there's other Gentiles, watch, watch this. He says in verse 18, having the what? Understanding, Understanding darkened, being what? Alienated from the what? Life of God through the what? Ignorance that is in who? Them. Do y'all see that? Because of the blindness. Can I stop there? Verse 18 shouts me. Verse 18 says, just maybe the court of D. Montreal Day, the reason why you're in the situation you're in is not because I put you in it or I allowed you to be in it. Maybe you're in the situation you're in today is simply because you've turned a blind eye to who I am. See, some, some of us, the word says, can cause harm to ourselves. Do y'all hear me? Because of our ignorance of who God is. Come on, y'all, say something. Don't sit on me now. Are y'all in here with me? And so look what he says. He says, I got to acknowledge my need then. Guess what, Dave? What, what, what is your need? First of all, here it is. My, my first need, he says, that I am depraved. That's what he said. He said, I got to acknowledge the fact that, number one, I am depraved. Let me just talk about that. That word depraved means to be void, to be without, absence. It means I'm missing. Can, can, can I suggest to you that there are people in places that are walking, talking, shouting, singing, doing, but are still depraved? Can I, can I tell you that that's why things happen when people get in a position to do certain things because they are empty, mm -hmm. they are depraved, something is missing. So watch this, if I'm going to accept the challenge or acknowledge my need, I've got to acknowledge first of all that I am depraved. So can I tell you what you can do if you acknowledge that? All you got to do is ask God, give God what you, ask God for what you want. And God then will give you the desires of your own heart. Right. How, how many of y'all are in need now? I, 
There's some things I'm in need of right now. The way to get what I need, I gotta learn to ask God for it. I'm helping somebody today. Don't ask the person you sit next to you because they're only gonna give you needs that can be met or meet needs temporarily. But I need somebody that can meet my needs, not just temporarily, but I need to be like that widow woman who, when, when, when her, 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 her meal had ran out of her oil, had ran dry, when she told God what she needed and she did what the Lord said by way of the prophet, every time she went back, she had a supply. All right, all right. That's my shot way. Every time I go back, I want God to supply me according to his riches in glory. But guess what? Before he does that, I got to ask God and tell him what I need. All in order because I got something to say. See, there are a lot of people that say something, but you who have been born again ought to have something to say. Are y'all in here with me? That's why everything can't come out of your mouth. If everything that comes out of your mouth, guess where it starts at? In your heart. So the text says, and I'm through, the text says in verse 29, he said, Let no what? Corrupt what? Communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the what? Can I, can I tell you the only way the church is going to be better is that it's the people inside the church. I wish I had a witness here. God has given us the tools. God has given us the instructions. God has given us what we need and desire to be made better. But guess what? He's not going to do. He ain't going to force it on you. I wish y'all would talk back to me. He ain't going to make you for he says, behold, I stand at the door and what? Nah. And whosoever will, if you open up, he says, I'll come in and sup with you and you with me. Can I tell somebody what you need to do? If God is in you and you are in him, then here's what you need to do. You need to anticipate the return of Jesus Christ. You need to say something. Yeah. 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 Say something. I told us the other day and I'm through. I said that twice, but we said one time through. I told us the other day. There is a vocal minority. There's also a silent majority. If you're in the vocal minority, guess what? You need to do what? Stop saying stuff. Those of you who are in, I believe I got it right, or in the silent, my, silent majority, you need to start opening up your mouths. And guess what? Talking about Jesus. I wish I had a witness in here. Talk about what he's able to do. Talk about what he has done. And if you hang on a little while longer, we'll talk about what he's going to do. Are y'all with me today? Because he says, right, he said, let no corruption or, or, or corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is what good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the what? Hearers. Can I tell you what you say? Just may be that which convicts somebody to know Jesus. What you talk about may be the only thing the hearers can hear that'll get them to see Jesus. That's why I can't do just anything. That's why I can't say just anything. Here it is. If I'm going to anticipate the return of Jesus Christ, here's one number one says, put, put things in order, but number two, don't stop talking. <laughs> I wish I had a witness here. Don't stop talking about Jesus. Paul was in jail this morning, but he didn't stop talking about Jesus. Can I tell you, you're going to be put on an Isle of Patmos by yourself, but don't stop talking about Jesus. People are going to walk off from you, but guess what? Don't stop talking about Jesus. People are not going to understand you, but guess what? Don't stop talking about Jesus because you believe he's coming back. Anybody know he's coming back? Yeah, yeah. Anybody anticipate the return of Jesus Christ? Is there anybody in here that's going to keep following God faithfully? Ask your neighbor. Say, neighbor, do you are you gonna follow him faithfully? Are you gonna follow God? Wednesday night is coming. Are you gonna follow God faithfully? Ministry is being rendered 
Are you going to follow God faithfully? Campaigns are, are, are being set, in, set forth. Uh -huh. Are you going to follow God faithfully? Because when you're on your back and there's nothing else you can do, mm -hmm. you, ought to ask to tell, you ought to be able to say that the Lord was pleased with me Amen. while I was able to do what I was able to do. Amen? Amen. We'll stop here. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. To God be the Lord, follow God faithfully. Wow. What a mighty move of God that was. I was electrified. I hope and pray that you were too. First Lady Arnith, your dad, and myself, we would like to say thank you for listening and tuning in to our worship experience this morning. And we want you to know that we hear you and we thank you for each encouraging word as you faithfully tune in each week to our worship services. Listen, if you are blessed and would like to be a blessing to this media ministry, you can send any donations of love to P.O. Box 546, Hamilton, Georgia, 31811. Or simply download the Givelify app and you can search the name Friendship Hamilton. And remember, as Pastor Day always says, we're not smiling on God, but, but God, God is, is smiling, smiling on, on us. us.